get this going like this. So, my first question, what are some of your earliest memories of when the invasion happened, of things that changed for you? Um. Now, maybe we should first say you lived very close to the German border, yeah. is that right? Five minutes. Five minutes from the German border. And close to which cities? Right on the Autobahn yeah. that would go from uh, uh, Amsterdam, Einem. Are you familiar Arnhem? with Einem? Yeah, okay. yeah. Einem a, and Berlin. Yeah. Yeah. It's and the we live uh, the, the main highway into Netherlands. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So you're just off that one. That boarded our farm, really. Yeah. And, uh, wow. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So, what were some of the first impressions that you remember of the German invasion? I myself do not remember them coming in. Really, the only thing I remember from the war is um, that the Germans would just come in the middle of the night just to see if you were hiding Jews. That was really the main reason often why they came just barging in. And so we all had to get up. And I remember having a picture on the wall with uh, Queen Juliana and Prince Bernard, and he took that off the wall and he stepped on it. Mm. That I do remember. Yeah. yeah. But other than that, we were children. We, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we could the grenade. I remember the sound of the grenade, and we could imitate that as children. And so we sort of played war, actually. Yeah. But that, you know, we were little. But Hank was older. Hank is five years older than I am. You remember, maybe. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the Germans came. Uh, they had to come across the big river. Yeah. And uh, they uh, they were shooting grenades for about a whole day and night, so that you know they uh, uh, they wanted to make sure that they could come across easy. And so was there resistance and and fighting back? Well, as well, yeah, the Dutch army was there. Yeah, they were they were along the river. They had uh, bunkers. And uh, they were holding them off, and they did hold them off for uh, a whole day and a whole night. But then, uh, yeah, it was such a big overmacht might yeah. that they uh, so they had to uh, retreat, and uh, and then they they came, you know, with big equipment and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And, and they, they you now we we were living on a farm, yeah. So we. Uh, we did not have big problems. The, the only thing is, the people out of the cities, they all, uh, a lot of them, you know, had to move. Mm -hmm. And we, we had a family with children. Uh, they came to, that was already prearranged. If the Germans would come, you know, then uh, the families out of the cities would send their children. Yeah, they, they, they could, uh, they had an address already. The Dutch government did The that. Dutch government did that. So we had also spoken for that we would take a family, you know, uh, to take care of them if something happened. So when that happened, you know, they, you know a day later they arrived, you know. And so you had then had for the during the war of people that you took right. care of. The, yeah, the, uh, Did you know them? Uh, no, but they were, uh, you know, they were, we could speak their language. Yeah. You know, they uh, they were they were Dutch people. But yeah. They were just they just had lived close to the border, you know. So for so, how long did they live on your farm? Uh, six months. Only six months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did was, you have contact with them? Was probably at the end of the war, wasn't it? From September till May. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's yeah. when all the fighting. Yeah, and they, uh, you know, we just, uh, you know, we had several, we had a farmhouse, and uh, we just had several rooms, so we just gave them an empty room, you know, and then uh, the meals we had together, you know, yeah, we did. because she helped with the cooking, and, uh, and you know, it was a whole family, so, yeah. so we just, together, we ate, and, and we just lived together, you know. And it worked out fine, you know. And did you keep contact with that family after the war? Uh, yes, we did, yeah. Mm -hmm. We were invited to their place, you know, for dinner a couple of times. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. 
So, um, w what activity happened on your farm as far as during the war? Well, with either the resistance we, or we with to, the Ger the German army. Yeah, they when they came closer, they were of course they they started to shoot. You know, uh, they, they wanted to get everything. We had like uh, oh one day and one night where uh, uh, they were shooting grenades. You know, continuously, they just wanted to clear the area. You know, and we had. Um, on the farm, uh, we had a couple uh, um, grenades come right through the roof of the barn, and luckily they did not explode. Oh! Wow. So they just tore a hole and then they fell on the ground, but they didn't explode. So we were lucky with that. There were some grenades that did explode uh, outside. You know, we had, like on the farm, on, in the farmland, we had several holes where a grenade came down and then exploded and it left like a crater. Yeah. So what did you do with the unexploded grenades? Uh, well, real carefully, you know, we picked them up. Oh. Well, you know, they, they were, the, they had already fallen in the dirt and, uh, you know, we, uh, like... Didn't people come, experts come? And yeah, experts came and, and, and picked them up. But, I think so, too. Uh, but that was, that was, you know, months later, and it, you know, we had a farm, so we, we started to plow the fields, oh. you know, and as I was plowing the field... Uh, you discover another one. Well, yes. We, you know, we either saw, I saw a hole where one had gone in the ground and then I, I took a shovel and I, you know, dug around it and got it out of, out of the ground. Or, and we've had a few where, uh, well, we were plowing with horses. So, you know, they're pretty steady. They, they follow a furrow, you know, if you got one furrow, they just follow it. Yeah. Well. When I knew there was a hole, there was a grenade somewhere in the ground, I just let them go and I laid on the ground while they were going. And then as soon as they were past that hole, yeah. uh, you know, I, I followed them again, you know. That's So it's uh, just for your own protection. If it exploded, at least, you know, I wouldn't uh, be close, you know. Yeah. So then after the, the grenades, did the Germans come onto your property? Uh, yes. And what was the well, interaction? Well, they would, no, they well, would no, the come Germans, that was, on uh, our property. Yeah, they our Dutch army, you know, they would come around the farms and pick up all the ammunition, ammunition that was uh, laying there, you know, that was... That was after the war. Right, that was after the war. But they, during the war, they, if they needed room, they would just come to your farm and say, we want that room and that room and this whole area. And then we had to do that. We had to empty those rooms. We had to give them the space that they required. You had to do that. You, you didn't know, talk back to the Germans. Yeah. They just didn't. And they... Um, but if, he, if you were saying, no, you can't have that room, <laughs> they, then they would say, oh, we'll take the whole house. Yeah, then we'll take the whole house. house. Yeah. You know, so you just have to yeah, give in, you know, and you know, give them a room and they don't say anything. And, but we found out that, I mean, in, in our case, most of those people, those Germans that came, you know, were people, especially the people out of the country and the people that had families. They, you know, they, they were really nice. They, you know, they, uh, they didn't want to fight. No, they didn't yeah. want to go home. And they didn't ruin anything. In yeah. fact, they, they told us even, you know, uh, hide as many things as possible because some of the army uh, groups, th those were... Uh, uh, the SSers. Yeah, the ones that volunteered, you know. And they did steal a lot and, and they would take over the whole house and have you sleep in the car. Mm -hmm. So, so you had a, 
kind of use uh, discretion, you know. Did, so do you remember some of the times when the Germans were then on the farm? Yes, oh yes. And well, what, was, do, yeah, what was the situation like with the Germans on the farm? Oh, the, the regular German army yeah, they, was they, no they were, they were In fact, they did, you know, they, uh, of course, they, you know, they, uh, they, well, they slept in the barn. But they did ask, you know, they were, those were family people. They asked if, they, if we had dinner, if they could sit with, with them, yeah, with us, just so they could see the children because we were all children, that would give them a feeling of being home as a yeah, family. Yeah. So most of those people, uh, they were no problem. All they wanted to do was get the water over and go home. Interesting. So you, you experienced that bit of humanity that some of those people right. had. And, and The majority. And you could, yeah. I mean, we had a few uh, uh, that were volunteers, you know, and they... Uh, Kind of like the Marines here. Like yeah, the, like I had uh, uh, rabbits, you know, I, mm -hmm. and what they did is they opened the cage and let the rabbits run out, and then with the gun they would shoot them, you know. But that were the ones. Yeah, that, the, those those were the volunteers. Yeah, you know, out of their army, you know. And. Um, did did you at all interact with the resistance? Uh, well, there's there's not much, you know. We uh, with the with the Dutch army. You yeah. Know, the underground. Yeah. Yeah, we oh. would help them, you know, with everything. Oh, the parents would do that. Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, if they. But so did your parents often keep the information and so forth from you as children, and you oh, didn't even yeah. know. Well, for me. I was only five during the war. Um, what a, a, like say if they would hide a Jew, which my parents actually only did once or twice, because if they would come in the middle of the night and find a Jew, they would shoot my dad and the Jew right there. So my dad, we had 12 children, so he was careful in that regard. But the underground, mm -hmm. wherever they could. Oh, they were very good at that, all the Dutch people would do that, yeah. Except there were some, and we called them the NSBS. Yeah. What, what would N national? Yeah. National, national Socialist Beweging? Those were Socialist Beweging, yeah. yeah, that's how yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were, they were yeah, those you didn't talk to, right. you didn't confide in them. Yeah. But, no. but most of those were, um, some of the neighbors, you know, in, it could be your neighbor, uh, yeah. Yeah, but you would know yeah, pretty and, much right away who you were. And those were. neighbors wouldn't give us any problems. They, they were still good neighbors, but they did socialize with the Germans. The reason why, then the Germans would be nice to those people. Do you know what I, what I mean? Yeah, the ones yeah. that sided with the Germans, yeah. uh, that was good for them at the time, mm -hmm. not after the war. We had a couple of business people that after the war they actually had to leave our town because they had gone, they sided with the Germans, they were NSB as we call them, yeah. and they actually had to leave town because living wasn't, they were not people accepted. didn't want to associate with them, yeah. you know, yeah. and if they had a business you wouldn't go to their business anymore, mm. yeah, but there were not that many really. No, I know. Mm -hmm. So what was the impact of the war on the people after the war? Um, that I heard something interesting that somebody told me. They said many people just went on with their lives and tried to put the war behind them and they didn't talk about it much. And others, of course, maybe would talk a lot about it. What was the experience that you saw in your parents' generation about how they coped with the reality of what they've, that, what they've experienced? Well, I don't really know. I know they were happy the war was over, and um, and I think they wanted to get on with life and get yeah, back to normal. Just concentrated yeah. on, on and, getting and recover from everything, right. you know, whatever yeah. they had to fix up and whatever they had to do. Uh, At first, know. they had parades, of course, you know, the, but after that, yeah, I would say they tried to get on with and make life normal again. Yeah. 
And of course, there was a, a, a great immigration from Europe after the war, um, you know, to Australia, South Africa, America, and so on. Yeah, I think that was more in the mid 50s. Yeah. So that would have been 10 years after the war. Yeah. The main yeah. reason was really Holland is only 150 miles square. Yeah. And there were like uh, 30,000 people living there. So the young farmers did not have much of a chance of, of getting their own farm. Yeah. So they, you know, had a chance to immigrate, uh, you know, to the U.S. and to, to Canada and, and start their own farm. Do you think it was also that we were afraid of Russia at the time, that they might still come into Europe? And that some of them left yeah, because of there, that. There I don't know. Was, yeah, there was some. There was some talk about some that. Some talk yeah. about that too. Yeah. That they were afraid yeah, of the, the Russians. Yeah, the Cold War, the start of the Cold War. That was after the. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right, that that right, mindset that the of now Russia is the big right. threat now, and yeah. so that concern, um, and don't yeah not wanting to be in another situation like you've had. Um, did now a, a little bit of an odd question. Um, now, this was not your experience, but obviously more of the generations before the First World War. Did that leave a big impact on on the people in your community? No, I not. don't think so at all. Not. So my parents would have been um, 18, because it's more 14, Belgium, 16. Yeah. They would have been teenagers at yeah. the time of the World War One. Yeah. yeah. No, they never talked about that, that at all. That was not a, a no. real... And what about the depression? How did the oh, depression? Oh yes, now the depression did make an impact on, on the country, on our family. Sure, yeah, that was 1929. Yeah. But then my dad always said it was they were still kind of okay until 1933, 34, and by that time maybe the money had run out or mm -hmm. whatever. He said that's when it really hit them and that it became uh, difficult. Yeah. yeah. Not so much right away at the time, 1929. Yeah. I think that was more the stock market, people that had a lot of money invested. But the farmers were okay until the, a couple of years later. Yeah. And um, so uh, was it better to be in the countryside during the Depression because you produced your own food? Oh, yeah. yeah. Living on the farm right. yeah. was the best. Because yeah. people would come from the city begging for food. Ooh. And then they would bring us maybe material to make dresses or something. The exchange, it's bartering. They did mm -hmm. that. But oh yeah, people would come all, every day. Almost every day they would come uh, asking come for food. Come on their bike and walking. And, uh, and, come, yeah. and especially coming it's, from the city. Yeah, <laughs> yeah desperation. Yeah. Um, so... You left uh, Europe in what year? Um, well, you were born in 30, 35. 35. So when the war started, I was five. When yeah. the war ended, I was 10. Uh, yeah, and I was born in the, the end of Actually, 1929, yeah. yeah. Stock market. December 29. Yeah. So I was older. My, my, dad's was, my dad was also born in December 29. Is that 1929, right? really? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Interesting. So, um, and then you, how old were you when you came to America? Um, was that 21? Uh, I was in the, my mid 20s. I yeah, think. and I was 21. Mm -hmm. And the main reason for coming to America? It was pretty much like Hank said, uh, there was no future in Holland if you wanted mm. to farm. <laughs> of all things, Hank wanted to farm. Uh, <laughs> and there was no future. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't buy one, and he was the oldest in his family. He could have taken over the farm, which they usually would do the old. Uh -huh. But then there were so many children left uh, that that was not feasible either. Mm -hmm. So, well, and then everybody talking about going to the U.S. That was a big deal. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it took four or five years to get your papers ready. So what we did is we went to Canada first. Because you could get in easier? Right away. Oh, yeah, they took yeah. anyone right away. And, and then we could get to know the language. We could learn that and help people live. And then it took exactly five years. And then the papers were ready. 
and we um, and then you have to go you have to enter the US otherwise you lose that mm -hmm. so then uh, but but dad what why did you actually immigrate because I know you went to follow him but why did you dad wanted you to were farm. looking for a farm in oh no the house. Okay. okay okay the farm why did you the farm? Dad wanted to farm okay the, the farm that I lived on yeah uh, was uh, rented, you know. Right. It was not our own farm. Because that was and, lost during the Depression, correct? Yes. And we, yeah, that's actually interesting. Yeah. And we had a, a, a difficult uh, owner of it, you know. He kept raising the rent all the time. So we wanted to get off that farm. Yeah. So then I told my dad, you know, uh, let's, <laughs> let's get rid of the farm and, uh, and go. But he didn't want to go. No. No, his dad stayed on the farm. He didn't but go so his dad actually owned the farm before 1929, before the yeah. stock market, uh, before the market came down. His dad yeah. owned the farm, but then he lost it because uh, he couldn't make the, the products weren't worth anything. The cattle, yeah, you know, I couldn't pay the mortgage. Couldn't pay the mortgage, so I had to sell it. So he mm. could stay on the farm. And then one of these rich people bought the uh, bought him out, you know. So his father could just, everything went on just the way it was. Only now he was renting the farm mm. instead of owning it, and that was hard for his dad, I think. Yeah. yeah. And the landlord was not nice. He was not a nice landlord. Hank said, "I will never stay on this farm if he will be my landlord." Mm -hmm. That was another reason too. That yeah. dad did not want to take over that farm. And you didn't want to go on the polder or something? The polder was... No. The polder was in the really... Meantime, I got, uh, you know, I was uh, five, I got drafted in the service, right. and uh, I learned to fly airplanes. Mm -hmm. So I had, uh, you know, I figured I can go to the U.S. Yeah. and get a job flying. So did you fly in the States? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you did. Yeah. He had one year of training in Texas. Yeah. Like part was first done in Holland, then he was sent to Texas. Yeah. I think that was also a reason why he wanted to go back right. to the U.S. He had already been here a year. Yeah. Oh. And I got and a job and right away with Kimberly Clark. Uh, well, yeah. so. not right away. Not right away. Not right but away. So, you but so you taught flight school in Montreal, correct? Yeah. Right. Yeah. First. Hadn't it been that we had those papers ready, I, th I think we would have stayed there. We liked it. Mm -hmm. We liked Canada. Canada yeah. was fine. And Hank had a good job at the time. She was born actually in Montreal. Oh, nice. Maryland. But I yeah. know nothing about I have no affinity. For yeah, I just yeah. happened to drop it. I say it's more like I was born on the boat, you know, yeah. because it was on the way in. You just have to right, live right. there. Yeah, yeah, you were but a baby not, when we Yeah. Right. So. But... Yeah. Just one other caveat with the with the grenades in the barn in Holland the barns and the houses are connected so that would have been oh yeah a grenade in the house it's not like the yeah. barn was out here this other house. Yeah. Right. yeah yeah funny right. when we would go in in the barn we felt that was part of the house here you go in the barn and it's you're not, in the barn that's right yeah there it's is like, a difference you know, it's just, it's just like your garage you know it's it's a, yeah. yeah you if go it's in the attached garage. to the house yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you that's true. Especially in the summer when the cattle was out anyway, yeah, then yeah. it was just extra playground and storage or whatever we did with it. But it isn't like here when I tell people the barn was connected to the house, it oh, how awful, it must have been terrible. It wasn't that way at all. Mm -hmm. No, that was just fine. So your connect with Holland over the years, have you been back a number of times? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I would we say every, every three, three years, years maybe. Yeah. It depends on if his parents, I remember his parents were married 50 years, or somebody would turn 50 or yeah, whatever, you know, for important. special, we would definitely go, yeah. yes. Well, because his old I family always, was still there, and you had two sisters. Too, yeah. You know. I actually always felt that um, we didn't really get to travel a lot to different countries, because if we did take vacation, <laughs> It would be Holland. Really, that is yeah. true. Yeah. Then we would go to Holland. Yeah. Yeah. So it kept us from really, um, yeah. Seeing the world. Really, yeah. It, yeah. The broader thing. So 
Um, as you went back with your family, now you became more Americanized in some ways, and, and, and especially your children and so forth. You became this Dutch American family, and here you're visiting with your real Dutch, Dutch family. People. How did that difference play out? Uh, there was no problem really. You know, we could easily be back in Holland and, and uh, you know, and get used to it. You know. Well, I I never felt I wanted to be back in Holland and live. It was fun to visit, but I yeah. I always. You felt I think the weather way. alone was a big factor. <laughs> yeah. um, you mentioned that all the time. I, I know it because it's damp. And, yeah. and uh, I'm not. It's much easier to live here and buy something and build a house. You know, the rules are much easier in Holland. It's such a small country and so many people close together yeah. that uh, you gotta, if you want to build a house, you gotta get a permit. Mm -hmm. And if you might get it, get it or not get it, you know. And they have room, restrictions, yeah. There's so many restrictions because too many people live close together. His brother-in-law had come to visit us and saw that we had basements that you could actually do things in. Mm -hmm. In Holland, there are more cellars than, yeah, than yeah, to yeah, store. Yeah. Yeah. And so he built a house in Holland, and he was determined to have a real basement like we have. But he had to do that secretly. Yeah? Because they wouldn't... He was not allowed to do that. Oh no. It was Uncle Tony in it. Yeah, well, and that story is true about a lot of our relatives that I mean, then the Dutch people don't really follow the rules either. Yeah. Oh, that you could be. To, you know, that you couldn't get a go to a contract and have them built. You have to do it yourself. So, you know, it's and, in yeah. quietly. Yeah, and then uh, yeah. And Jose, Jose's and her husband or and you, sir. boyfriend. I mean, they connected. Remember, they built on a kitchen with a little doorway oh, between because yeah. they couldn't really add on, so they just built a separate place and then put a little. And you use the lumber, you know, like so that it doesn't look new, you know. Uh, yeah. You, you were building it yourself. And In then, case you had an inspection. If they come and they have an inspection, oh, that was here already, you know. Ah. You, you know, that's just the way we bought it, you know. So. Oh, uh, the classical stories, yeah. So they had a. I have to show him that picture that I have. Going so, on. do you know anybody. Whether it be friends or relatives or so forth that got very much impacted or affected in how they were by the war. I'll give you an example of one case that I know. How they live by the rules? No, no, I mean, uh, if, you, if you have any friends that their life really changed, their pers the, the war changed their personality or they had some issues because of the war of relationships or things that happened. I'll give you one example that I knew. Um, a man that was a young teenager during the war, and he lived in the city in Nederland, and he said to his mother, well, we'll go feed him just before supper, you know, so he just took his bicycle and just went, went around the block and got stopped by the SS. Oh, oh. And what happened was, earlier that day, one of the SS men was shot. Shot, oh. And... They, the other SS saw a guy in a light trench coat run away. So they said it's now time for retribution. Yeah. So they gathered 10 people with light coats, made them line up, and then they uh, stopped like this boy and uh, lots of other people, and they forced them to watch when they killed these 10 people. Do you know the city? I don't that remember it happened? the city. Oh, because no. I know the story. No, that happened more than once, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I think and, so, too. And so he was forced to watch this. And, and and when I interviewed him, the bitterness that was in his soul yeah. because of that, he, it was definitely a, a, a vivid hate yeah. for the well, Germans. Was it awful. was just against the Germans. It was not against those soldiers and so forth. He couldn't stand anything German. Yeah. He and, and I was really um, you know surprised by because I got to know him as a very nice man, everything, and I, because I knew his daughter. Yeah. And then suddenly, when this came out, I realized this is deep. It is probably uh, that it was not the German uh, army soldiers. 
Well, hey, it no, this matter. is SS. The SS the SS. Were, that was the German army also. That was part yeah, of the army, the, but yeah. they were more meaner. Yeah. Yeah. They were more mean. Yeah. You would call them here the, the Marines, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So did you did you know any people that had experiences like that that just changed them deeply? No, yeah. I just the, know stories what tears. you're telling me. Those, yeah. no, those were volunteers and they were not drafted by the Well, I don't know, Hank. Mm -hmm. uh, the SSers. Yeah, those were all volunteers. Yeah, that could be. Yeah. yeah. Um but well, yes, there are stories. You saw a difference between regular soldiers and oh, the SS yes, in definitely. terms of your... Oh, yeah, we were... The oh, SSs yeah. SS you were afraid of. Yeah. That, that was uh, just the SS. They and, just oh, took over the best room in your house. And yeah, they were... They were the, go and live in the, in the barn, you know. They were mean. But the, yeah. the German army... The regular the army. Way. No, they were... They would stay with us. And, they were and like they, your neighbors up the street. That yeah, they were. Yeah. Yeah. They, so they spoke German to you whenever they came, mm -hmm. and they expected they, you to I think understand. They spoke German, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you could understand it, okay? Yes, yeah. Could you? Well, mm -hmm. most of it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, people always say it's like Dutch, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. We were in Germany the last time you had surgery, and mm -hmm. I thought, no, this is wonderful. It was in a hospital that belonged to East Germany before, so now it's all one. And I thought, oh, that would be so interesting talking to these people. What was it like as being in East Germany and then you become one? Mm -hmm. And I couldn't. It was just, I could say, good Morgan, and that was well, about it. Well, no, the interesting part of that is that they, even the young people could not speak English. Yeah. In the former East, and this is how many yeah. years after you... Well, you know, and... That was not good. They could speak Russian and German, but... I, my feeling is almost anywhere in the world I go, I find some college students or yeah. young people can all speak English. Yeah. The fact that they couldn't is not good in terms of mm -hmm. economic, yeah. you know, and development of the country. I they, thought that was really telling. Or I had the same experience in Russia. Um, anyway, else I traveled in Europe, um, young people could speak English or sometimes very well-dressed people. Oh, yeah. speak English. But, but in Russia, well dressed, young, it doesn't matter, they don't speak English. No, well, it's they, not there. Right. Oh, well, yeah. no, Russia probably yeah. would. Yeah, they, uh, it's still very rare, you know, to have English. Whereas the rest of Europe. Oh, look at that. Oh, you know that stone yeah, that yeah. came out of our farm? Is this from Uncle Henry? No, the stone, Diana just took a yeah, picture yeah, of yeah. it. So you could read all the names of the people. We had uh, 20 people staying with us during the war, the, oh. that last part of the war. Oh, here it is. And um, after the war, this one man, he he had it made. It was see. a stone that, it was about this big. Yeah. You call it a stone? Yeah. It's a yeah. Stone. It was that like a relief. Yes. Yeah. 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 And so these, and then he had all the names, and they were... It was like a relief. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. carved Let into the do. stone. Yeah. And all those people stayed with us from September till May, or pretty much, yeah. yeah. From and September. then they that, gave that, that as the, a stone. And that was given to us, viewer. to my parents. Oh. And it says in Dutch, you uh, gave a rough, um, you, you, um, yeah, you have um. made. Geherbergd. Je hebt mij geherbergd. Ja, 5 mei 1945. Ja, 9 september 1944 ja, tot 5 mei 1945. Ja, really, see the war. Met dankbaarheid onderaan. Ja, yeah, so they uh, us prima. Ja. Yeah. And that is the farm. And they gave that to my parents. And then my parents had it put in oh, the wall. Oh, fantastisch. Uh, they had put it in the wall. So later, when we went back to the farm. They had just put a cloth over this, Aww. this thing. They maybe didn't know what it meant. I still don't understand why they did that. So my brother went there and asked if he could take it out, take it out of the wall. And the man that had put it in is still was still in our hometown. He took it out and he brought it here, and then they had replicas made of it. Oh, and so, beautiful! Yeah. So but, that honor was not lost. Yeah. No. Right. No. Yeah. That's beautiful. But uh, but pretty much, and here you can see from September 
till May. Yeah. So the, when they came into the country, it took only one week, and they ran all over Holland. They took Holland in one week because our army wasn't mm -hmm. strong enough. Yeah. After that, it was more occupation. Mm -hmm. There wasn't much fighting going on until September 44. And then till May 45, that's where the fighting was really done. And then the Allies came to help us. And hadn't it been for them, I often wonder where would we have been. Yeah. Yeah. Because the plan was, if Hitler would have won, that he would have taken a, a, a whole group of Dutch people, put them in Russia, and a whole group of Russian people, put them in Poland, and divide people, you become like less Stalin, strong. Like Stalin did. What did is that? that? Stalin did that. Stalin. Yeah. You become less strong and easier to control. Yeah. So we could have been, we could have really been in Russia mm -hmm. as we speak. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I often wonder what would have happened had we lost the war, had the Allies not come and help us. So do you remember when the fighting really started? Like, do you remember a no, change? No, I only, when, rem when the, I only when the remember... When the Nazis were driven out. I remember the end of the war because I remember everybody was so happy and... Mm -hmm. And they had parades and stuff. 1945. And yeah. that was 90, yeah. May 1945. And we had this kind of... So when, was, um, uh, when did they drive the Germans out of your part? Because it wasn't in May, I'm sure it was before. Right, that. Was, it, yeah. Ours was pretty much... Uh, it took a long, much longer than the northern part. I think they were already... Part of Holland was already free much sooner than we were, and you were in almost the same area. It yeah. took longer, and yeah. I think it had to do with the Rhine, yeah. the river, yeah. the Rhine, mm -hmm. the big river. Mm -hmm. There's a so terrible theaters. battle in Arnhem. That, that Arnhem was the yeah. big battle, yeah. and the Rhine had something yeah. to do with it. Yeah. So, um, This yeah. is fascinating. Well, thank you so much for this wonderful reflection on your peace in the war, and um, hearing from you. It's, it's wonderful. I, visited just in closing I visited with um, a man came to the university library and he experienced the war in Flanders oh, in Flanders. and 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 then he was ex uh, saying how a bomb exploded right outside their house and ripped every window out blew every door out in their house wow. uninhabitable and he was looking after something like 12 siblings he was oh, the oldest really? of 12 children oh, wow. and then they had to go find themselves a place to stay for that night but they couldn't go into the house it was messed right, up right, right. and yeah all those experiences amazing yeah. see we did not have that horrible stuff yeah. happening yeah it uh yeah but i'm yeah. sure many people did because his brother brought a book about your hometown and I actually, when I read it, I had to stop reading it. it, it, it yeah, that's uh, the book I was looking for. Yeah. But you, you guys farmed at night, right? Farming? I thought that you guys would do the farming at night because you couldn't be out there during the day at some point or not. Um, no? No, what we did at night was slaughter a pig or yeah. a cow oh, because that yeah. was all counted. And, but once in a while, say if your cow had twins, for instance, Mm. Two calves. No, you had an extra calf that my dad could grow and yeah. and uh, raise, and the Germans did not know about it. Then you yeah. would have at one time a cow to kill, yeah. but you had to do that in the middle of the night. See, you had to in report the dark. everything that was on the farm, how many animals, yeah, you have to. And, and 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 how many uh, young ones were born, and all that. So what we did is if uh, uh, if. A little calf was born again, you know, we would... We Not would butcher, born it. We would butcher like a, an animal, and then that calf would was then the a number in, in, you know, so the number stayed the same. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, or not tell them that. Yeah, don't yeah. tell them that we I butchered know, it all sorts of stuff. You weren't supposed to, you had to do that. That's what we did at night, butcher it yeah. at night. Then yeah. you did it at night. I had it all cleaned up in the morning, and... You know, it was in the, you know, we used to put it, um, the meat was cut up in pieces and they put in jars. Canning. 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 Yeah, we didn't have freezers. So. And, uh, you know, we did that all, did it all the night and then, then it was put in the cellar. Yeah, that we did at night, yeah. yeah. So did you pickle the meat? 
pickle it? No. The no. salt. No, so you had it in big canning jars and you boiled it on the stove and then oh, it was sealed. Okay, okay. And that yeah. would or stay. Or meat that yeah. it's sealed. Yeah. So it won't spoil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. interesting. Fascinating. It was an awful time. Yeah. yeah. I never had to do it when I got old enough that I had to help with it. We had not our own freezer, but you had a freezer, a locker in the city uh, that was your own then. And that was a frozen yeah. locker yeah. in a freezer. And so we could bring the stuff there. <laughs> yeah, I never had to do the canning. Did oh, the Nazis a... check the lockers in the city and raid them? Pardon? Did the Nazis raid the oh, lockers? I don't think we did it. At that time, I think it was still all canning and you kept it at home. Yeah. yeah. yeah but you the, had this. That was I after did. the war. Oh, that's after the war. We did, uh, I remember we had uh, uh, canning jars, uh, had them buried in the ground. With money. <laughs> well, no, but also with, with, with meat. food. Yeah, with food. Hmm. Interesting, that interesting tricks to. Well, I, so think, yeah, I come, think every family did see if something. If you come through the, the house, they would look, you know, and. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they would take, take whatever they, they thought they, take whatever they could they get. They needed. So, so if we had it on the ground, you know, they, they, they can't find that. You yeah. Know. You gotta wonder that people haven't been excavating over there and finding all yeah, the find stuff. Yeah, find all the stuff that was buried. Know that it and and well, then we knew exactly know. where it was, you know, where, where we put it. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Well, thank you very much. This is a wonderful, very interesting experience. Thank you. Do you 